Today we're going to talk about proper length and time and what I like to call point length problems. So let's begin with proper time. You'll recall in the two postulates video that I said that you never talk about correct time when you're dealing with relativity because correct time sounds like absolute time. And there is no absolute time in relativity. But we do have something called a proper time. And the proper time is very simple if you're talking about the duration of something then you simply need a clock that's in the same frame as that object that's enduring. So for instance, let's say you've got a short-lived particle. Some collision, etc. happens, that creates the particle, and typically it would be moving at a high speed. It travels along, and then it exists no more. It changes into other types of particles. Now, if I want to measure the proper time of the duration of that particle, the lifetime of that particle, what I've got to do is put my clock on a reference frame that's attached to the particle. So the reference frame is going to move along with the particle right until its lifetime ends. So the clock's in the same frame as the thing that's enduring. And this is really the same problem as if we had, say, a rocket ship moving at a speed v between two planets, say, a and b. Once again, that reference frame attached to the rocket ship, its clock is going to measure the proper time because it's in the same reference frame for the entire duration of the trip made by the ship. Now this becomes a little more complicated if we have two events and we want to talk about the proper time between those two events. In that case we've got to have the clock at the same spatial coordinates as those events. And it's got to be a single clock. So let's say you're standing here on Earth looking at the night sky and you see a flash of light and then there's another flash of light. And we'll call event 1 that first flash of light, event 2 that second flash of light. And we'll say you've got a clock down here. Well, that clock could record the proper time for the light reaching you from the first event and the light reaching you from the second event. Because then the two events are at the same spatial coordinates and they're being measured on one clock. But that's not really what we're after. We're after the time between the two events out there in the sky, out there in space. And in order to make that measurement, we'd have to do something like create a rocket ship so that we could talk about a reference frame and a clock on that rocket ship. And that rocket ship would have to exactly pass the event as it occurs and then travel at constant speed and exactly pass the other event as it occurred. So that we're making our measurements on a single clock and the events are taking place at the same spatial coordinates in that reference frame. Now keep in mind this proper time is always the shortest amount of time. An observer in any other reference frame will measure a longer time between those events. So if delta t primed is the time measured in any other reference frame, and delta t naught is the proper time, then they're going to differ by a factor of gamma. And gamma, remember, is a number that's bigger than 1. So our time interval in any other reference frame is always bigger than the proper time. So if we go back to that familiar situation where we've got the observer on the Earth and we've got the observer on the rocket ship, and the observer on the Earth, he looks up at the rocket ship and he says, your clocks run slow. But when the guy on the rocket ship looks at the clocks on the Earth, he says the same thing. Your clocks run slow. And if we think of this in terms of proper time, when the guy on the Earth looks up at the clocks on the rocket ship, he's looking at events on the rocket ship. And the only observer that can measure the proper time for events on the rocket ship is the observer on the rocket ship these clocks are reading a proper time. So they're going to show smaller time intervals than the ones down here on Earth. And so he says, your clocks run slow. 
when the guy on the rocket ship, he looks back on Earth, he's looking at events on the Earth. And it's only the clocks that are on the Earth that are going to measure proper time for the events on the Earth. So once again, he's going to see these clocks showing smaller time intervals than his own. And once again, in relativity, we don't talk about the correct lengths, we talk about the proper lengths. And proper length goes by another name. It's also called the rest length. And that's because it's the length of something when it's measured in a frame in which that object is at rest. If a length is measured from any other reference frame, any reference frame that's moving relative to the object, then that measurement will yield a shorter length. In other words, that proper length is always the longest possible length of something. So if L prime is a length measured from some other moving reference frame, and L naught is the proper length, then this L prime will be contracted by a factor of gamma. So because gamma is a number that's bigger than 1, when we divide by a number bigger than 1, we get a smaller length in that moving inertial reference frame. Let's now move on to what I like to call point length problems. Now these problems are quite easy to do, but they come up a lot on IB exams. So in terms of garnering you marks on your IB exam, point length problems are really important. So in these point length problems, there's two reference frames. In the one reference frame, we refer to a point, and that point is really going to be the origin of a coordinate system. And that point, it might represent an elementary particle traveling at relativistic speeds, or it could represent an observer in a rocket ship, or one of these relativistic trains, etc. And in the other reference frame, we'll refer to a length. Now that could refer to, say, two markers on the Earth. It could re refer to two planets. It could refer to the length of a spaceship or space station or the length of a train, etc. But we've got two reference frames moving relative to one another, one involving a length, one involving a point. So because we've got this relative motion between the point and the length, we can look at the point's reference frame in which the point is at rest, and then there'd be this length that was moving by, and that could be moving by to the left or to the right. Of course, from the length's reference frame, the length itself is at rest, and it's the point that's doing the moving. That might be some observer in a spaceship, etc. So who measures the proper length and who measures the proper time? The observer in the point frame or the observer in the length frame? So from the point frame, we have two events. First event, say one marker crosses the point. That would be event one. Second event would be when the second marker crosses that point. So that would be event two. Now the point didn't move, so its clock, its clock here at the origin of the point frame is at the same position for both one of those events. Clock at same position for events one and two. That means the point frame measures proper time. Now for the length frame, the length stays at rest, and event one is here, and event two is when the point is here. If we imagine our observer in the length frame, then of course he can measure the proper length between those markers because he's in the same frame as the markers. He's not moving relative to that length. So the point frame always measures proper time. The length frame always measures proper length. So let's try to do a typical IB point length problem. 
So pause the video, read the question over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So our situation was as such. We have the Earth and Sirius not moving relative to one another with a fixed distance of 8.8 .8 light years between the two. We've got Sue. She is our length observer. She's in our length frame. And we've got Anne. And she's part of the point frame. And that point frame is moving at 0.8 C. And you probably remember when we have a relative speed of 0.8 C, gamma comes out to be 5 thirds. Okay, question I is to find out how much time between those two events for Sue. Well, that time is going to equal whatever distance she sees divided by the relative speed between the two. The distance here is 8.8 .8 light years. The relative speed is 0 0.8 C. So we're going to get 11 years for the journey as seen by Sue. Part II. Who measures the proper time? Well, it's the observer that's in the point frame. Anne measures proper time. How do we know that? Because in her frame, her clock is at the origin for event one, and her clock is at the origin for event two. Since her clock is at the location of both events. Question triple I, we're asked to find out the time as seen by Anne, which is the proper time. And since the dilated time is equal to gamma times the proper time, the dilated time is that of Su. That's 11 years. Gamma here is 5 thirds. So we can work out what T naught is, and we should get 6.6 .6 years for Anne. And part IV, from Anne's perspective, Anne's at rest here. There's Sirius, it's moving to the left. And here's the Earth, also moving to the left. The speed there would be 0.8c. Anne sends out the beam of light. She says it's traveling at a speed c. And that speed is not affected by the motion of the two planets. So that means the relative speed between this beam of light and the Earth here is going to be c minus 0.8c. Our relative speed, the speed at which the light is gaining on the Earth, is going to equal 1c minus 0.8c or 0.2c. And the distance between the Earth and Sirius will be a contracted distance. So we've got to take that 8.8 .8 light years and divide it by gamma, 5 thirds. So the distance there is going to be 5.28 light years. That's the distance between Earth and Sirius as seen from Anne. It's the contracted distance that Anne sees. So how much time is it going to take for that light beam to catch up to the Earth? Well, the distance there, 5.28 light years, divided by that relative speed, 0.2 c. And it comes out to be approximately 26 years before the light is going to actually catch up to the Earth. So let's summarize those key ideas from the video. We first of all talked about the proper time gave it the symbol T naught, where the time measured from any other reference frame would equal gamma times the proper time. So it's always going to be the shortest possible time. So if we're talking about the duration of something, then the clock has to be in the object's frame. If we're talking about events, then it has to be a single clock at the same location in the frame. We then talked about proper length. Usually write that as L naught, where the length in any other frame would equal the proper length divided by gamma, which means it's always going to be the longest length 
any other reference frame will measure a shorter length. And we said we measure the proper length by placing an observer in the object's frame. And then finally we talked about point length problems where we would have a point reference frame that would measure the proper time and we'd have a length reference frame from which we would measure the proper length. And this applied to a variety of scenarios. We might have a rocket passing markers, perhaps an elementary particle in a lab, or maybe a long train passing a point. But lots of different scenarios were point length problems, and we saw that they were quite easy to do.